Weizmann. I was born in Warsaw from a very big and very good family who was, my father was a religious man. We, are in, we were in business. There were 12 kids. We had a very warm family and every Friday night and Saturday night my father was singing and all the boys and the girls were singing and eating the traditional. It was very nice and we holidays all summer. In that time when the war started and I was already a grown up girl and I read a tremendous lot and I was very interested in the things that were happening from 33 in Germany. And it looks like and it looked like it's going to be very bad. And I had a boyfriend whom I was with whom I was going out, and and he said we've got to get out. And I said, what do you mean? I couldn't possibly leave my parents. The seventh of September, we were all heard, we all sat down and heard the violence from Polish government. The Polish government said that only God can help us now. All the young people get down and start, get out and start digging trenches, which for us looked ridiculous because the war was already over. When thousands of people heard what the radio said, we decided the war is finished and we lost the war. Poland lost the war. And it didn't take long to lose the war because they were, the Polish army was on horses and bayonets when they came with such a tremendous power, tanks and everything. They were bombing and, and burning and people were dying tremendously damaged. We were sitting in the basements because we, we couldn't get out. And, we, and I ran with my boyfriend because he insisted that if we don't go now, we'll all be destroyed. And thousands of young people that ran, ran through the bridges. And then we walked for, I think, about 800 kilometers because we walked mostly at night. At the night time, we, we slept on, on barns, on, on fields, and so on. There was a lot of uh, incident there. Uh, coming to Ukraine, we once came into our up to home, and we were, very, we were very hungry and thirsty and very tired. And we lie down on the straw. There was nothing but a little stove or something. And, and, uh, and all of a sudden, a Ukraine a group of peasants came on horses and bayonets and started just without asking, without telling, starting cutting us up. And we were very lucky because one boy was in field and he ran into a barn where the a Polish army was there, you know, and, uh, and he started yelling to them, they're killing the Poles. And they came out and started shooting and so on. So well, I was cut up and everybody was cut up. It took us ages to begin with the Red Cross looking after us. My baby was born one day on the street near that timber yard because uh, I didn't know the language, I didn't know anybody. And I didn't know whether I'm going to have a baby, but I felt that I have to go towards there because my husband was working. And I came there and there was nobody, it was closed. And I had the baby on the ground and the mud and in the water and in the dirt. And there were women, I don't know, peasant women who apparently took the baby. I don't even know who. And someone ran and asked my husband to come because I had the baby. When he came and saw me, he was so upset that he was, he became angry. And he said, and he insulted them. He said, you're a barbarian. And after a half a year, you know, they came in and someone said he wants to see him. He was cutting cabbage. We were hungry all the time. There was nothing to eat. So someone came in and said, someone wants to see you in it. He went out as he stood and we never saw him again. And we were taken to prison in the little town there were near. And then we were transferred to the trains and thousands and thousands of prisoners were from all the prisons from that part of Belarus that was. And we all waited in the trains until uh, they collected all the people. And we started a journey, a very heavy journey for about probably two months to uh, Novosibirsk, 
that is the, two, the prison number one. Uh, we had uh, better conditions only because we were uh, 140 women and seven children, babies. We did have very little food and uh, we didn't have a toilet and we didn't have, you know, just a hole in the, in the, in the, in the cattle train and it was terrible. We didn't have what to cover, it, but it was warm, so that was one thing that was positive. And there were the soldiers with the rifles and I asked him, please give us a little bit of water for the baby. And he put up the rifle and says, oh gee, I will be you, this means go away, I'll kill you. So that was the end of the story. We, we had suffered very, very much in that train. And, uh, and we went out every day, every second, for a little air with the children, you know. She never went with us. She was taking everything what we put away. I didn't eat those few biscuits because my baby was growing and he was... Um, and, and she took the babies, she took the baby's biscuits, she took everything what she could find because we weren't there. She was alone in the cell. And I was very, very angry with it because I was hungry, my baby was hungry, and I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even do a thing about it. So I said to the girls, we went out, oh, and I said to the girls, why are you so afraid of her? She's a little woman, you know, we are very strong six girls, you know, we were young girl, young woman, very strong, with babies, and, and she was, she was, a, and, she, and they were afraid, and one girl told her this that I said. And she said, first she started, Sonichka, give me this and give me that, and I gave her. I said, if somebody wants something, please ask me and I'll give you. Then she started asking me. But then she told the girls that she's going to kill me. And they said, how are you going to kill her? She said, there's plenty of glass up there. She was sitting up there on top, you know. <laughs> Eventually, I couldn't even sleep at night because I was afraid that she will, really, because she was always up there and there was plenty of glass. It was very primitive. Everything was artificial and primitive and there was a lot of bugs inside and a lot of uh, mosquitoes outside eating you alive because it was all, you know, the water and everything was done uh, artificially and, and, and the, I don't know what, the rice or something, it was something extraordinary. You couldn't sleep because the bugs, because there was no beds, there was no chairs, there was no, I was in a little room. But I came together with uh, quite a few people Polish, Catholic, generals, majors, uh, particularly one judge. He was an older man and he was, uh, he was uh, uh, very close to us. He started coming and, and he was hungry and he couldn't see because they, you know, we got all sorts of things there like the uh, chicken blindness and all sorts of, uh, which I, I can't even, uh, you know, uh, describe that what sicknesses they were. Very unusual, we didn't know anything about it. So naturally uh, I helped them a lot and everybody from the Christian boys, that they were all prisoners of war and they were all, they all came, came to me to, for help because I was the only woman there because they were all single men, a policeman, a general. One was sick, he was came, it always came to me to help them. They later helped me but at that time I was helping them just I couldn't I could not help them because they were so they were all old people there was a lot of soldiers Polish soldiers they were all arrested in the beginning I worked as a cleaning woman in that big government house and I slept in a tiny little place on a bench there was nothing but there was a little primus, and whoever came was hungry. I cooked on the primus and gave them food. And I worked very hard. Uh, and then they sent me to the garden, to the garden. So I, this was good because there was a tomato, there was something you could have in the garden. And this was very good because when I went to the kolkhoz working in the garden, my boy already was in, in the kinder, in the crash, and there was, they got food for the babies. And that was the only thing that we, I did worry. The orphanage we opened in Little Town, 
and we collected children from the street, Catholic children, 25 and 25 Jewish children. We got food from the government, the exile in London, and that was something very unusual. There was Polish nurses and, and Jewish a few people, and I was also with the girls, working with the girls. There uh, we, we did a lot of things for the children. We uh, looked after them, uh, we, we have teachers coming and teach them a little bit, and uh, uh, my little boy was uh, small, but they were in kindergarten also. They coming and teaching them. There was something already Polish, you know. We we already sort of looked forward to go back to Poland. And I got there uh, a typhus with typhus, you know, and and I was very sick. I didn't even know, but uh, we had a, a Polish girl who was in the kitchen, very lovely girl, and she said, if Sonia doesn't eat anything, she's going to die, because I stopped eating, because I was com completely, completely sick for the eyes until they realized. And they took me to the hospital, and from the orphanage they were bringing me food, you know what I mean? And I recovered there, and you know, I couldn't walk and everything, but since I came to them, I had to get out, you know what I mean? This is something that you had to. I was very, very sick. When I came back, I couldn't walk, I couldn't... And my, my son, I said, Yuri, Yuri, he's Jack, but I called him Yuri because it's a, a Russian name. And, and, and he looked at me and he walked away. He didn't know me, you know, <laughs> it was something very unusual. Came, but we had better conditions in the trains because uh, we had a bit of straw on the ground in, in the trains, and we went to the border of Poland when the church came and picked up the Christian children, and we went with the Jewish children further down in a part of the Poland where it was sort of very much German, and the German ran so that town Jembice was completely empty. There was a special group of people came from Israel and they looked for the children and uh, in churches and so on. And those people took my children away to Israel. Later when I came to Israel I met them all growing up and so beautiful. I came back to Warsaw and there was nothing. I came with a friend, I found a friend there, and we went around, he was living not far from us, and we were looking. The Warsaw Ghetto was completely destroyed. There was one big mountain of rubble. We didn't even, we were both born there, we didn't even recognize the street in Warsaw when we came. And there were no documents, nothing. Everything was burned, everything was destroyed. Uh, people that survived in Poland, I never found anybody who was connected or knew my family. I went all over the world, the States and Canada and everywhere. We found here one, some, but never did we find anybody who can tell us how and when they all taken away. I had uh, lost six sisters, three brothers, three, three sisters, uh, uh, I, I already married with children, and two sisters and a brother were in Belgium, and I have from them a photo, and I know exactly how they perished, 19th of April, 43. They were taken to Auschwitz. I am there this? because I lost my whole family, because we've got to remember, we've got to remember, we've got to fight, fight fascism, anti-Semitism, we've got to see that there is harmony, there is tolerance, and we've got to try to the children, show them what happened, that it will never happen again. That's, I'm working there because this for me, I never get it over, that I lost such a big family, that I, I never found anybody who told me who can say where and when they perished. And this is something which goes with me all my life. And I feel that this is the only thing that we, we should, all of us, see that with the new generation knows exactly, because even today there were people that deny, that say that never happens, and uh, never happened, and it's, and it's very difficult to convince such people, and it affects the young people should know what happened, so they themselves will fight justice, 
discrimination and fascism. That's all I can say. <laughs>